and I'll be back either today or tomorrow to share um, what I've been reading. And there is a spider from my microphone. Gross. Okay, middle grade March is just cruising along and I've got a few books to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about the book that I started at the beginning or at the end of last week, The Dreamer. Um, and I had said like I just, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on in this book. And it wasn't until I finally finished the book, you know, like 360 some pages later, that I realized that she was actually writing um, this based off of a true story. She was writing about a guy's life. Um, so it's about this character that, that lives in Chile and I think when we start out, he's like eight, and then all of a sudden a couple months go by, and then all of a sudden he's 11, and then a couple months go by, and then he's like, like, <sighs> um, I, I understand her time flashes now because it's based on a true story, but it felt very disjointed, and like we kept like just jumping here and jumping there, and um, yeah, so I didn't really like that, and then now it also makes sense too, but every now and then there was just like these weird like little poetry things and questions and now I realize that the guy that she was um, that this book is based off of is a poet or was a poet um, I didn't really look into anything else like normally I like to kind of do some research about you know the person that was written about but I wasn't a huge fan of this book so I don't really care um, I mean it was okay but not great uh, yeah, so there was that book, and then, <laughs> speaking of like, okay, but not great, this was our pact. I had heard lots of things about this one, um, well, not lots of things, just lots of good things. It's about this group of kids that, um, on autumn equinox each year, their city or whatever lets out a bunch of lanterns down the river, and they were going to follow them, and it sounded interesting, like, whatever, and that's fine, but <laughs> I think I just... I'm the kind of person that if a book is going to be like fantastical in any way, I need to know this ahead of time going in. Like, I don't like spoilers, but here I thought we were just like following this group of guys. And then all of a sudden they meet this bear who is trying to find the fish that are in the river that go up to the sea. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Um, the pictures are cool. Oh, and then they meet this like witch lady. <laughs> Uh, I, I really appreciate the illustrations. Um, I just feel like <laughs> maybe I should have known a little more going into it what we were getting into. Um, yeah, so I haven't officially given this a star rating yet and I have no idea when I'm going to give it because yeah, like first of all, I'm not the intended audience and I really don't know what I think about this book. So yeah, there's that. And then um, I'm still reading Emily of New Moon. I'm like a third, a little over a third done, and I'm really enjoying it. I still haven't got to the part where I had read before. Like I know I've, I've read probably at least half of it before, um, but so much of it I don't remember. And I really like Emily as a character and I really appreciate L.M. Montgomery's attention to detail and her descriptions and um, how she can like channel these kids and she just, I feel like she accurately portrays um, pre-teen, teenage kid, girls really well. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then I am reading Aragon. I am buddy reading this with Holly still and we are going to be finishing it up this week. And this morning I sent her a text with like a lot of different thoughts. Um, and then uh, just a few hours ago, I was watching a book, no, watching a book, watching a video by Elliot Brooks. And uh, she was talking about travel stories and how some people don't like travel stories. And um, because they kind of like hop around 
and people are on their journey and things just kind of come to them. And I'm realizing maybe that's kind of like my issue with Aragon. Like I, I like the book, but I feel like some things just kind of don't make sense. And I feel like the author, like they're going on this journey, but when the author gets lazy and doesn't want to like describe what's going on, he just like jumps forward a few days. Um, and maybe that's not it, but that's how it feels to me. And then there's a few little plot holes where like at, at one point the two main characters are in a city. They don't want people to know who they are. So they change their names um, so that people don't recognize their names. And uh, one morning the one guy goes out and he leaves a note for the other guy and he's like, okay, yeah, so I'm going out. I left some money for food under my mattress. So like he's hiding the money for the food but he leaves this note out in the open. I mean, like it's in their room, but whatever, it's out in the open and it says their real names on it. Like, couldn't he just use their code names that they're using in the city? Um, so there's a few things like that. And I'm like, hmm, this doesn't really make sense. But uh, yeah, so overall it's a good book. And um, I know my, it's one that my daughter will like when she's um, ready for it. Uh, yeah, so I'll keep reading this book throughout the week. I'm gonna keep reading this. And then um, I don't know if I'm going to do like another book in addition or if I just want to finish this one first. It's kind of playing that by ear right now. I do have uh, still a stack of my March TBR that I need to get through. And then I went and pulled out a bunch more middle grade that I own that I want to read. And I have a bunch from the library. So I have a lot of book options, but not sure if I should just finish one of these first. So yeah, I'll check back in, in a day or two. So I went to the library yesterday and um, picked up my holds. Um, I generally pick out a lot of books from the library. I watch YouTube videos and get suggestions and then I kind of just like go and request all the books. Um, so I definitely don't read all the books I request because I have a hundred book limit on how many books I can have out. And uh, yeah, sometimes between me and my kids, we use that. Sometimes I even grab one of their cards and we've gone over the 100 limit. Um, so just because I get books out from the library doesn't mean I'm going to read them. But obviously at some point they interested me enough to put a hold on. Um, yeah, so I'll just share the books that I currently have. The first one is The Bear and the Nightingale. This is, I think, a trilogy. This is the first book. Um, I started reading the ebook last year, probably about a year ago, and um, it's a like Russian fantasy folklore type idea. Um, and the book was really interesting. I remember there's two reasons I didn't finish it. One, because it's an ebook and I suck at ebooks, and two, um, because it's like Russian, everyone's names started with a V. And I was just so confused as to like who was who. So I decided the next time I read it, I'm going to get, you know, like the hard copy and make like a character list so I know which person we're talking about. Because yeah, I was just, I was confused. But this one has sounded really good and um, I'm, I'm curious and I wanna finish, like read the whole trilogy. So hopefully I can get to this one at some point. Um, this next one, I know zero about um, the Illuminate Files. This is also the first book in a trilogy. The only thing that I know is like the formatting of the book is really cool. Um, and that's why I'm interested in it. I don't even know like the genre here. This morning, Katie thought breaking up with Ezra was the hardest thing she'd ever, she'd have to do today. This afternoon, her planet was invaded. Um, so, Science fiction, artificial intelligence, plague. It sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's maybe like YA. I'm just mostly interested about the formatting. And then uh, they got like blacked out words all the time. I don't know if it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know anything about this book, but the formatting has me very interested. So I hope I can read this. Um, because it is middle grade March, I also have a ton of middle grade books I got from the library that I'm going to do like a completely separate video on my middle grade haul, uh, library haul, because there's so many of them. Um, and so I'm prioritizing middle grade books this month. So I really, really don't know if I'm going to get to like any or how many of these, but um, yeah, they sound interesting. Now the, the next three books, they're all by Sean 
Smucker? They always cover up the name. Um, Light from the Distant Stars, The Day the Angels Fell, and The Edge of Over There. Now, I think I heard somebody talking about this book on a video, and then maybe they talked about the other books. Like, this is one where I don't know why I requested it. Uh, I think it is fantasy, or at least some of these are. Um, because I don't remember anything, uh, obviously it wasn't like good enough to stick in my mind. So if these are books that you recommend I read or not, let me know because at this rate I'm not going to prioritize them because I don't know anything about them. And they don't have cool formatting like Illuminate does. <laughs> now the next two. This is, you know, my book with a favorite cover, Elantris. <laughs> oh, this cover. Um, yeah, okay, so I got two Brandon Sanderson's. Elantris and Warbreaker. Now these are both standalones. This is like kind of a better cover, but like kind of not. This one is science fiction. And I think, well, this one is fantasy. Um, they're both pretty hefty, but I really liked his um, Skyward, the first two books in the series. So I kind of want to prioritize these. And I have a feeling people are going to have holds on them. So I can probably only have them out for a maximum of three weeks. Um, I probably won't be able to like renew my hold, so I would like to at least try one of these before then. This one looks a little thinner, but I really liked his sci-fi Skyward, so then I'm kind of like leaning towards this. I don't know. Which one would you recommend? Yeah, so those are just my um, library haul for this week, and uh, yeah, let me know if you think I should like prioritize one of these. And I'll be back either today or tomorrow to share um, what I've been reading. And there is a spider from my microphone. Gross. That's lovely. Okay, I'll see you in a day or two. So I finished Wednesday Wars the other day and just loved it. Um, even more than I remembered. I knew I, I knew I loved it, but I forgot like how good it is and all the different things that Gary D. Schmidt adds in. I highly recommend that as a uh, middle grade book. Um, I do think it's like upper middle grade, you know, probably more like grade seven if you're giving it to kids. Um, but wow, very powerful. And the audiobook is fantastic. I've, I've listened to the audiobook twice now and haven't actually read the physical copy, so um, I'm not sure about the actual reading experience with the book, but the audiobook is fantastic. So because I finished that, I started a new audiobook, and um, I started The Land of Stories, and then I found this at the thrift store the other day because I got about a third into the book, maybe, and realized that it's one that my daughter is going to love. Um, so far, I think like the series is um, these twins, these boy and girl twins, that go into fairy tales. Um, but I feel like that's been done before. One of the things I liked about the beginning of the book is it gives some really good backstory um, about the kids. Uh, their father passed away like a year ago or six months ago or something and you know they're they're obviously devastated and stuff but they're not like being mean. Their mom has to work a lot. They are understanding like they're devastated but understanding and I feel like um, they're really good characters. There are a few words in here that I'm like, uh, I wish those weren't in there. Like, the boy doesn't do very well in school and I think it, it says something like someone was pissed or something like that. Um, I was listening to the audiobook so I don't know exactly where it was. And uh, yeah, there's like a couple words like that um, where I just wish he would have used different um, wording you know, to get, you can get the point across without using words like that. So um, that's unfortunate for a middle grade book, but um, yeah, the story itself so far has been very interesting. And then that, so that's my audiobook. Let's see, let's put that there. Then I'm still reading Emily of New Moon. I'm getting decently far. Uh, still loving Emily. She wants to be a poetess when she grows up and it talks about like the poems that she's creating and she writes these letters to her deceased father and L.M. Montgomery wrote the letters as if, you know, like a nine, 10 year old girl was writing them and there's tons of spelling mistakes. They're very grammatical. 
um, and like phonetic spelling mistakes and I enjoy that like added thought into it so yeah with reading that one and then also still reading Aragon I am really close to finishing this book it should be I think in the next couple of days based on the amount of chapters that we're reading possibly even tomorrow um, yeah like so far like overall still a good book I feel like there's a few plot holes I would say like I've heard it categorized as middle grade technically it's young adult but I would say it would be like high middle grade low young adult kind of thing um, there's like one scene that's maybe more like young adult where um, this village has been um, massacred and there's like a, a dead baby on a pole I was like if that scene wasn't in there it would all feel very middle grade so far um, but yeah so enjoying that and I'll just continue on with these books. But something I didn't mention um, for middle grade March is there's actually, I think, five prompts for the month. Um, now, technically, if you read any middle grade, you have fulfilled uh, the middle grade reading challenge, whatever. But there are five prompts that I'm not specifically going out to um, check off, but I noticed I'm kind of like unintentionally getting them so I'm gonna pull them up here and I'm gonna just see what I've done so far so the first one is a book with illustrations now I read this was our pact and oh and the dreamer and wonderstruck all have illustrations so I've definitely fulfilled that challenge a book about books or stories so obviously the land of stories is covering that one uh, a mystery. So far, I don't have a mystery. A book set in another country. Yeah, well, Wonderstruck is set in the US and I'm Canadian. The Dreamer is set in Chile. Heartbeat is in the US. So yeah, got that one as well. And a book to screen adaptation. No, actually, I think Wonderstruck, did I see this as a book to screen adaptation? Possibly. Um, I'm gonna double check that. Um, and Emily of New Moon, there was a TV series, I believe, about this. So assuming I get these books read, which I easily will, the only one I need to fulfill yet is a mystery. And I think that I have some books, not on my TBR, but like on my like want to get to after my TBR that are mysteries. So hopefully I'll be able to like check off all the challenges. So yeah, that's my reading so far in the last couple of days. So my reading week wasn't as productive as I thought it was going to be. Um, it was just ended up being a crazy week, even though I originally had like almost nothing in the calendar things just kind of came up and stuff happened and it's been busy but um today's friday and i've got the rest of the day technically for the week uh to read i have three chapters left of aragon i was supposed to finish it yesterday but i couldn't quite get it done so i need to finish aragon hopefully today i should be able to it won't take me very long at all to read the last couple chapters because they're short and then i have been listening to land of stories as i've been you know, doing my various things. Um, I think the audiobook said I'm like 48%, so pretty much halfway through. Unfortunately, there's a few things in here so far that are making me a little disappointed in it. It is funny, the, the character, the main character that's a boy, because there's a boy and girl twins, um, he's very witty, and I know my kids would love his humor, but the, there's been a few implied things or things mentioned that I think would go over my kid's head, but um, I don't really want them reading this, at least until they're older, and I don't know, I'll wait to finish the book before I like make a final decision on that, but um, yeah, I thought this would be for, you know, like 8 to 12 year olds based on kind of the start. But there's been a few things that have made me um, think that I should save it till they're like 13 to 15. Um, it doesn't say in here an age range. Sometimes it says on the back 
or right inside and this one doesn't but I'm sure it was supposed to be for ages 8 to 12 and um, yeah there's just a few things that have made me kind of want to up that before my kids read it. Thankfully there, we have tons of other books that they can read and um, even lots of other fantasy series that they can dive into before this uh, but, but the idea so far is interesting and I'm curious to see where they go from here um, and then like I don't know how many books are in the series but um, I know it keeps going on so I mean it's a decent series there's just been like a few minor things that I just wish weren't in here and it could be for the 8 to 12 range and then I am also still reading Emily of New Moon I don't think I've read anything since I last updated I just haven't read a whole lot this week um, so I'll just like continue with my books my those three books throughout the weekend and then um, hopefully be able to start some new ones for the next vlog I hope you guys had a great reading week and I would love to hear what you've been reading um, any thoughts on the books that I've been reading or any suggestions on what I should read next